Across the Jacob Media Network, presented by IBEW Local 98. Coverage of the 2021 NFL Draft rolls on on a Saturday night with NFL insider John McMullen, co-host of Birds 365. And the end of what has been, John McMullen, a <laughs> long, long three days for the work that you do, starting with um, our conversation going all the way back to Thursday, but uh, just a long three days. Let me first ask you um, to summarize, and you can use the press conference, Howie's press conference tonight, to set the table for the audience. Well, I, you know, I think the Eagles uh, did what everyone wanted them to do in the first round by drafting Devontae Smith. And then from that point forward, they went to a more traditional Eagles draft. And that's what Howie Roseman said today. Guess what, guys? We're going to keep drafting linemen, offensive, defensive linemen. I've been talking about it forever. That's what the Eagles believe in. Um, they got back to it. The only difference this year is they really like Devontae Smith as a player. Plus, there weren't a lot of great linemen at the top of the draft, Krause. So they just got back to what they do a little bit later and how we admitted that today. I know if we go back and you've heard the cliche by now, John, let's go to the tape. If we go to the tape on uh, Thursday night after the pick or even Friday morning, on Birds 365, you may have been the one individual on the island who disliked the pick. You don't dislike Devontae Smith. You just didn't like the pick when it was made. Yeah, and it had nothing to do with the player. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, you know, Rashawn Slater was there. Uh, I thought that would have been a little bit smarter long-term. Justin Fields, even. Um, he he fell. Um, I think that would have been a little bit smarter for long term. Um, but as I told Jody McDonald, doesn't mean I don't like Devontae Smith. think he's a really good player. think he upgrades this wide receiver position, which has been so difficult and such an issue for this team immediately. Um, I just think there's bigger value in other positions. and But you know what? The Eagles addressed that a little bit later by getting Landon Dickerson and getting Milton Williams. And today, in day three, you know, they got three more defensive linemen, although they listed Patrick Johnson as a linebacker. He's more of an edge rusher. So, you know, they went back to what they do in the final two days of the draft. Nine picks total six on the defensive side of the ball. So if you know what you know now and you look back to all of the conversation leading into the draft, take the players, take the names off the sheet. Did they address the primary issue in this draft? Well, Krause, I thought they had so many needs that – they almost had to address uh, a lot of issues. I guess the one thing um, they didn't address satisfactorily is cornerback. Now, they finally got a corner today in the fourth round. Um, but let's be honest. I mean, that's not a guy you expect, and that's Zach McPher McPherson. That's not a guy you expect to just walk in and, and start. Maybe he will because maybe he will have to, but that's not a position you want to be to have a rookie fourth round pick out there against, you think about this division, Krause, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup in Dallas, um, C.D. Lamb, Terry McLaurin in Washington, all the, all the receivers for the New York Giants. Eagles still got a big issue at cornerback. And Howie Roseman also t said today, in his draft wrap-up that he mentioned it the other day as well. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat. They can look at uh, getting a corner in different ways. He mentioned he went back to the Super Bowl season, said they traded from Ronald Darby in August. 
So, and he started in the Super Bowl. So maybe uh, they have to go in a different direction at that particular position. You can't, when you have this many needs, you can't address them all in one draft. Let me ask you, if you will, um, to talk about the draft recap by Howie and the team, the collaborative team. You know, there was a lot of chatter throughout the day today uh, about the Tom Donahoe video clip yeah. um, from yesterday. Was that talked about? Not today, because we talked about it. And Howie was just pretty honest about it yesterday. Um, that was when they traded down in the third round and got Milton Williams. Um, and it was pretty clear that Tom Donahoe wanted Aaron Robinson, who was a corner who went in between that 70 and 73 range. Um, so, you know, it was interesting because we had Andrew Brandt on Birds 365. I don't know if that guy has a crystal ball or not, but what he told me pre-draft, look, the issue is not the player. The issue is not the player. In other words, Aaron Robinson or 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 Milton Williams, who they picked, it it it, it one of them, you know, Robinson might be the better player. What the Eagles did might have been the better move. The problem is if you spend seven months, you know, gathering this information, putting together a draft board. And then when you walk into that draft room and you ignore all that work from your personnel department, Andrew said the air goes out of the room. I thought you saw that on top. You saw the air go out of, of Tom Donahoe. You saw the air go out. Of, um, now, that's one particular scout, senior advisor. The question, Krause, is was it about the player or was it about the board? If it's about the player, it's not that big of a deal. It's You're just arguing, I like this guy better. <clears throat> if Aaron Robinson was on top of the board and Howie Roseman went away from that, then it's the problem. Then it's a problem. Paul Dama, which was on with D Gun today, they did a he uh, was there to do a breakdown uh, of round six uh, with Gunner. The conversation <laughs> came up uh, about Donahoe, and I know Dama is going to be on Birds three sixty five with you and Jody Mack on Monday. The conversation did come up. Dama, and I'm paraphrasing, um, didn't see much relevance or reason to be concerned. This stuff happens all the time. Again, I'm paraphrasing. Um, the situation this time just happened to get caught on camera. No, he's right. And arguments happen all the time, back and forth. That's not that big of a deal. That's why I point out the argument over the player is not a big deal. The argument over the board, and that's what Andrew Brandt said, that's a big deal. So in other words, to use a better example, the Eagles went against their board when they took Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. The Eagles went against their board when they took Jalen Hurts over Jeremy Chin. Now, I don't know if they went against their board uh, or, you know, Tom Donahue was just upset because he didn't get a player he liked. If he's upset because he didn't get a player liked, it's not a big deal. Dama's 100% right. If the Eagles are, are ignoring that seven months of work, that's a bigger deal. That's the reason people are leaking information and saying, you know what? It's not my fault. I didn't. I wanted to take Justin Jefferson. It's not my fault. I wanted to take Jeremy Chin because they're ignoring what they have in the past ignored the work, Krause. Now, so if they ignored the work, that's the problem. If it's about a player, it's just an argument. And yes, but it is funny that 31 other teams, I will say this, managed to get through this process. And when that red light is on, they're not yelling at each other or they're not showing that angst. Only Philadelphia. It only happened 
with the Eagles. <laughs> so that's a bigger, that's the probably the bigger issue. And back inside that um, Howie Roseman recap from his press conference, uh, John, um, how do you think Howie graded the Eagles' performance? Was he asked? Did he talk about it? Well, I mean, everybody loves their draft. Everybody gets everybody they want. Everybody's great. I say it all the time. I mean, what else are they going to say? No, we didn't get uh, – we're not happy. I mean, you can't do that. Um, so all drafts, you know, if you're going to be fair, it probably mm -hmm. takes three years to grade them, but nobody wants that. They want to grade right now. They want the hot take. Honestly, I thought the Eagles did a, a solid job. Um, but again, and you saw it, I talk about it all the time, but you got to see it. So people who think I'm, I'm, I'm not telling the truth, for 22 hours, Howie Roseman was popular in this town because he, he took the skill position player. Then he went back to the default setting, and it was linemen, linemen, linemen all over the place, and people aren't happy about it. You know, I was on in Atlanta today with Harry Douglas, the receiver, uh, used to be on the Titans, the Falcons. Um, even he admitted. I, I told him what was going on in Philadelphia, and I said, and and Harry was a receiver, and he admitted, I can't do my job until the other people do their job, the offensive line, the quarterback. I need their help to do my job. Mm -hmm. That's why those positions – are more important, and that's coming direct from an NFL receiver. Let me ask you then, based on based on that statement, let me get your comment on this. This is the year that Jalen Hurts is going to prove that he can be a starting quarterback in this league or not. That's what – that's my understanding. That's what everybody is saying. This is Jalen's year to prove it. If not, we've got three first round draft picks stockpiled away for 2022, and we'll deal with it post 2021. If that's truly the case, does Jalen have a chance, John, to succeed? given the makeup of the draft, given the weapons that he has, given the fact that he's, we know he's, or at least we think we know that Zach Ertz is gone. He's still here. I'm surprised he's still here. But as we talk, still Zach Ertz is still here. Does he have a chance based on the way, based on the schematic he has? Yeah, I'll tell you why he has a chance, Krause, because nobody expects anything. Um, I think most people expect this team to have a bad year. And I don't necessarily expect them to have a bad year. I think a lot of it will be tied to the health of the offensive line. I think if those guys are healthy, and I'm talking about Lane Johnson and Brandon Brooks and Jason Kelsey, and that's a big if. Those are big ifs. But if they are healthy, this team's going to win more games than people expect. And if you win more games than people expect, guess who's going to get the credit for that? The quarterback of the football team. But what so is that number, John? I mean, win, win more than four? Win more than last year? Well, and, and, win, and, and win six? Or what? What is, what is the real number, do you think? I think the number's going to be about eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And I think if it gets to that number – which is a possibility, people will say this is a second-year quarterback. Really, his first year as a full-time starter, there, there's a lot to build on there. So I do think there is a road to success. Question is, the Eagles shouldn't get caught up in that. They shouldn't get caught up in that. They should evaluate the player. And do they think, that this is a long-time successful starting quarterback. I can tell you, this is what scares me, and I've said this pretty consistently. I We've talked to so many evaluators, and I've talked to so many evaluators, both on Birds 365 and off 
uh, off whether it's conference calls, off the record stuff. When you're talking about Justin Fields and Trey Lance, and the, the Eagles wouldn't have had a chance at Trey Lance, it turns out, even at number six, but they had a chance on Justin Fields on Thursday night, and they didn't take it. Every single one of them said it's not close. When you're comparing the skill sets in the ceiling of Justin Fields versus Jalen Hurts, Fields is a much better prospect. Every single one of them. Now, if it were seven out of 10, I'd say, eh, who cares? You know, some people like this. Some people like vanilla, some people like chocolate, some people like strawberry. What flavor do you like? Everybody to a man said it's not, not only is J Justin Fields a better prospect, it's not close. So what are the Eagles looking at? Do That's you, my concern. Do you believe that to be true? Yes, unfortunately. Um, but I think a lot of Justin Fields. I thought I think he's going to be a very good good quarterback in this league. Um, I think Jalen Hurts has a chance to be 15 or 20 if you're going to rate the quarterbacks. That's his ceiling. Field ceiling is probably top five. Before we now get that's out. ceiling. That's ceiling. That's you know, no guarantee, but Jalen Hurts can't throw the football like that's the reason he was a second round pick he doesn't have that top tier ability it's just the bottom line at this point before we get out of here with john mcmullen we'll ask john to give his draft grade i do want to remind everybody tuning in and listening to our coverage of the 2021 nfl draft you may have heard Derek gunn earlier uh talk about um our Devonte smith Jersey giveaway. Uh, Johnny Mac, you certainly know nobody provides uh, better uh, prizes uh, than the Jacob Media Closet. Well, we're giving away 10 Devontae Smith jerseys because Devontae was the 10th pick selected uh, in the Thursday opening round of the NFL draft. Now, what do you have to do? We want you to subscribe to the Jacob Media channel. That's all you need to do. And then on May 12th, the official release of the NFL schedule, when we get to that Wednesday night, um, we will give away uh, the Devontae Smith jerseys and we'll provide a lot of details uh, about, uh, you know, a lot of details about that. Um, before we go rapid fire, just to get some quick snippets and bullet points from you uh, on the individual picks, uh, let me ask you if I can um, about, do you think the Eagles won the draft or lost the draft? And in which round did that become apparent to you? Um, I think they had a very good draft. I, I think the first two days of the draft, I think, went very well, even though I would have went in a different direction. I think Devontae Smith is a very, very good player. Uh, I think Landon Tickerson, uh, there are some injury concerns. I, I get why people are concerned, but if he is healthy, if he's able to stay healthy, he's going to be a top-tier offensive lineman in, in this league. And, and Milton Williams has a lot of upside, so I think – I think day one and day two worked out very well. And then you talk about today, I think the Eagles got a, their running back two and Kenneth Gainwell. They finally got a compliment to Miles Sanders. I think they repopulated a defensive line that needed to add depth uh, with a number of prospects that could potentially develop uh, down the line. And I think they, they took a couple interesting hybrid players, which I've been talking about for a while. The Eagles coaching staff, both the previous one and the current one, keeps talking about this idea of positionless players. Well, they finally took a couple, at least on paper. Now, we'll see. Anytime you have late-round picks like Jacoby Stevens and Patrick Johnson, you can't expect a ton out of them. But I, did, I do think 
it was interesting because of the types of players they were. They are. Krause, I lost you. Uh, are you muted? That's me. That, my, my my bad. I muted out of there for a moment. I want to uh, I want to get you to comment uh, on uh, Kenneth Gainwell. But before I um, turn over to you, I I do. We had a lot of comments, a lot of engagement uh, from all of our view, viewers all three days of the draft. And as you know, we have an incredible uh, amount of engagement during Birds three sixty five uh, during the middle. Uh, one uh, comment today. Um, struck me and I've used it three times already today. I used it when I talked with Derek Gunn, uh, Kenneth Gainwell, the running back, uh, out of Memphis, uh, great name, great last name Gainwell, for, yes. uh, for a running back. Uh, talk about, talk about him, um, uh, in terms of what you know about him, uh, and, and is there, will he hit, will he hit the field? Uh, John, will he not only make the roster, but will he get minutes? Yeah, I think he's going to be the, the compliment to Miles Sanders. Now, we'll see. I mean, the Eagles have Boston Scott. Uh, they have Jordan Howard. They re-signed him. They even have Jason Huntley. So they have a number of bodies. But it'll be clear they want this kid to earn the job. You know, it's interesting. He's from Yahoo, uh, Yazoo City, uh, Mississippi. Uh, he's that's where Fletcher Cox is from. He's Fletcher's cousin. So um, you, you can see that pipeline to Yazoo City, Mississippi. But uh, he played only the concern is he played only one season at Memphis. He opted out. He's one of those guys. His family was hit pretty hard uh, by the pandemic. They had, I think, four deaths from COVID. So he had a really difficult time, his family, getting through that. Uh, it's understandable why he didn't want to play because of that. Um, but the one year he did play at Memphis, I mean, he was phenomenal. And there were people talking about him like he would be a second-round pick. So I think it was tremendous value. There's always a concern he hasn't played in so long. So it might take a little bit uh, to knock off the rust, but – I thought they got great value in, in Gainwell. I'm going to say it, and then you can correct me and correctly tell me how to pronounce it. Marlon Tuapalatu. Close? Um, it's close, and I still got to get there. I always say Halapula Bati Baitai. See, I, I, I've i gotten that. I, I still have to learn Marlin myself, but it is Tui Pulotu, as I understand. So Tui Pulotu, um, I don't think it'll be that difficult, but it takes you a little bit while. It takes you a few reps, but uh, Halapula Bati Baitai, there's a rep. Well, Marlin, defensive tackle, USC, another victim from the defensive side of the uh, side of the football. Uh, if you watch the network coverage, uh, they like the pick. They thought it was a good pick. Yeah, good player, USC. A um, little bit bigger because you have Milton Williams, who they uh, picked in the third round, who's also a defensive tackle. But he can also play a little bit of a defensive end role as well. So you have some – versatility, kind of smaller. Uh, uh, Tui Peloto is, you know, 310 pounds, so he can play nose tackle. He can uh, play under tackle. So you have that versatility, and the Eagles need depth behind Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave. Remember, they lost Malik Jackson. Um, Hassan Ridgeway is back, but he's always injured since he's been here. So – they had to get younger. They had to get depth on the defensive line. They were able to do that. Two more, John, and then we'll get to your uh, we'll get to your grade. I want to end our conversation tonight with your grade um, on the entire Philadelphia Eagles draft, all nine picks, and then plus um, there were there was a trade or two uh, there as well. They ended up giving away what two they had 11 they they, they yeah they gave up two. a six round pick which was 225 and they gave up a seventh round pick uh to get a fifth round pick in 2022 
And that that probably works out well because the 2022 draft is supposed to be a lot deeper than this draft. Remember, Krause, typically when you start this whole process, there's about 1,300 players when NFL teams start. Because of the pandemic this year, it was in the 700s. So math tells you this draft wasn't as deep as typical drafts. And thin at the later the later it moved on today, yeah. the thinner the thinner the options. Exactly. And next year, because it's going to be higher. So typically it's 1300, it's probably going to be 1600 or so. So it might be the deepest draft in history next year. Jacoby Stevens, LSU. What's your thoughts? Interesting about him? player because yeah. He played safety at LSU, weighs about 215 pounds. The Eagles listed him at linebacker. So he's sort of that tweener-type player, probably too small uh, to be linebacker, a little bit too big to be a safety. And they're going to try to turn him into this positionless player who plays everything, sort of a hybrid. Plays a little safety, plays a little linebacker, maybe plays a little slot. Hey, not, why not roll the dice? That's what I was talking about. That's what defensive coaches say the game is heading toward. So you might as well try. You might as well take a stab at those types of players. Well, with Jalen Mills, uh, now, 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 now Jalen Mills isn't or wasn't Jacoby Stevens. Jacoby Stevens isn't Jalen Mills. But Jalen Mills moved around, and Jalen Mills yes. leveraged himself into a nice deal with the Patriots. And by the way, um, you know, Jalen is from LSU. Jacoby's from LSU. If you're around this league, Krause, LSU guys stick together, man. They're, they're LSU through and through. Jalen would go back, uh, give advice to Jacoby and the rest of the D-backs uh, when he's with the Eagles. So he gave a good little story about that. It was pretty interesting. And – yeah, those LSU guys, man, they love their time in Baton Rouge. Last one before we get to the grade. You had an opportunity to talk with all of the draft picks today. Is there any one of the nine? Well, you didn't talk to nine today, but you've talked to all nine. Is there any one of the nine that stood out, John? ahead of everyone else? Um, I, I would say the guy we just talked about. Um, you know, it was interesting, Andy Weidel, when he talked uh, after uh, today's picks, mentioned three of the guys were team captains, Jacoby uh, Stevens being one of them. Um, the Eagles placed a lot of um, – maybe even a little bit too much uh, uh, on their evaluation on guys being leaders in, in the locker room. And, you know, he was one of them. And he was really impressive when he got a chance to talk with us, does a ton of work off the field, even at the college level, um, as far as charity work and things like that. So I think Philadelphia is really going really gonna to like that kid. It's our Philadelphia Eagles 2021 NFL Draft Recap. We've reached the point in the conversation where Johnny Mack puts an official grade uh, on this draft. And I want to caution everyone, <laughs> all of the members of the McMullen Mafia and all of the members uh, of the McMullen haters, and all of the um, uh, listeners and viewers uh, that value, John, um, the way you conduct yourself and the way you do business. I want to caution everybody <laughs> for this grade. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. What is it? Um, I thought it was a good draft, but I'm, I'm not going uh, above a B minus. Um, because they didn't address the cornerback position like they would have liked to, uh, no matter what they say. Um, and they say they stuck to their board 
uh, but to come out of it with just a fourth round corner and you're sitting there saying, and Howie, you know, it's May 1st. They don't have to play until September. But between May 1st and September, they have to find a cornerback somewhere to play opposite Darius Slay. So your official grade is a B minus? B minus. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, solid. I thought they did a great job on the deep uh, defensive line, the offensive line. I love the Dickerson pick, even with the injuries. I think he's going to be a really good player. I think people don't understand. Look, he's torn both ACLs. I get it. But this is an offensive lineman. This isn't, you know, a 4-4 guy outside trying to come back from multiple ACLs. He's going to, he's going to put some braces on there, and he's going to go. Uh, and he can just play. Uh, so I like that pick. Uh, I said I would have went a different direction than Devontae Smith, but that's not because I think he's a bad player. Um, so overall, I think they did, they got value. And Gainwell might be the most value, valuable pick for where they got him. If he plays in Memphis last year, that's a second round pick. And if you're Maybe not the third round pick, I'll say that. And if you're not a subscriber to the Jacob Media channel, you do not qualify or get the opportunity to win one of 10 Devontae Smith jerseys. And you'll hear a lot more over the next 11 days. Um, and then we'll break it all out, John, on May 12th when the official unveiling. Uh, of the uh, schedule occurs. Johnny Mack, well done. Great stuff. We'll see you Monday morning. Uh, you and Jody Mack, uh, Birds 365 uh, begins again uh, on Monday, uh, every day, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Yeah, I'm excited to get back to talk with Jody about the draft as a whole. As you mentioned, we'll have Damo on, uh, trying to get uh personnel guy as well, maybe a former NFL general manager at some point this week. That's going to do it for our coverage of the 2021 NFL draft, all presented by IBEW Local 98. Johnny Mack, thank you, sir. Thanks, Grousey.